who are the Ammonites? Let's spend a little bit of time in the background since we have this short chapter here. You often hear about the Ammonites and the Moabites, and we covered the Moabites more extensively in the book of Ruth. Uh, you always hear that, that coupling there, the Moabites and the Ammonites, these are the enemies of Israel. Um, but the Moabites and the Ammonites both descended from the incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughters after Sodom was destroyed and Lot's daughters Remember that scene where they got their father drunk and they seduced him into having children by them. The older daughter of Lot begat Moab and the younger begat Ammon. And so you have the Moabites and the Ammonites, descendants of Lot. And this is recorded in Genesis 19, 37 through 38, which records their descent. Verse 37, and the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The same as the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger she also bare a son and called his name Ben Ami. The same as the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So the Ammonites often allied with people like the Syrians and the Chaldeans to attack Israel. And very much like the Philistines, they were an arch enemy of Israel. So the Moabites and the Ammonites were also banned from entering the temple of God, according to the books of the law, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy specifically, because they refused to give Israel passage through their land when Israel was fleeing out of Egypt into the wilderness. We see this in Deuteronomy 23, 3 through 4. An, Anamite, an Ammonite, or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Now that was interesting when we were studying the book of Ruth. So if you remember, Ruth was an Ammonite, was a Moabite, uh, but she was converted to the God of Israel. And in verse four, because they met you not with bread and with water in the way, when you came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against the Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. So because of this, the Ammonites and the Moabites were forbidden to enter into the temple of the Lord for ten generations. Whereas the Moabites, we also saw, worshipped the false god Chemosh, the Ammonites worshipped the gods Milcom and Molech. Some say that Molech and Milcom are the same false god, but the Bible appears to make a distinction between them. We see that in 1 Kings 11.5. <clears throat> For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Remember the Ashtoreth were those wooden poles that they would carve out the images of the idols and worship them? Well, Solomon went after these wooden idols in his latter years as king. Then in verse 7, it says, Then did Solomon build in high place for Chemosh, that's the god of the Moabites, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. So Molech and Milcom are listed as the false gods of the Ammonites. Molech, as uh, you, may have, you may know, was a fire god, and he was the chief Canaanite deity associated with child sacrifice. So that's why we often compare the abortion mills today, like Planned Parenthood, to sacrificing children unto Molech. That's where we draw that comparison. The Ammonites were particularly disdained by God because of their disregard for the sanctity of life. We see a, a verse in Amos 1.13, which says, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women with childs of Gilead, that they might enlarge their border. So isn't that what those who commit abortion do today, right? They rip up their babies limb by limb and butcher them in order 
to enlarge their borders, in order to seek greater opportunities, in order to further their careers or maintain their personal lifestyles or personal conveniences or whatever it may be. It's ultimately in order to enlarge themselves and their own lives in its modern day child sacrifice. So in large part, America today, because of the, the globalist Democrat Communist Party, is no better than the Ammonites and the Moabites of ancient Israel. And we saw that Israel did this as well. During the years of their apostasy, they worshipped Molech, the fire deity, and passed their own children through the fires. God even had to inscribe this in the code of the law, because Israel was doing this. In Leviticus 18.21, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. So the Ammonites were ripping up women's you know, wombs and tearing out those babies, and God hated them for this. Uh, and, and, he, and he spoke about it, and the Israelites were mimicking these surrounding nations. This was the nation that Israel was mimicking and asking God for a king. So you can see how this grieved God's heart, and it angered Samuel the prophet. We see Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 19, 4 through 5, because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known nor the kings of Judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. So this level of depravity seen by the nation of Israel and the surrounding nations never even entered into the mind of God. It was not something that God himself was even capable of imagining. You know, we think God can do anything, but he's not going to go against his own nature and sin. Uh, he doesn't have sinful thoughts. He doesn't have evil thoughts. But his own people conspired with devils to sacrifice their own children on the outstretched molten arms of Molech. Do you think there are Christians today who do this as well? Right? Did you know that the birth control pill, for example, is an abortifacient? And why did God's people do this? Because they commingled with the Ammonites and the Moabites, and they began to worship their, these foreign false gods. 1 Kings 11, 2 says, Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. So this was the prohibition about mingling with other nations. It had nothing to do with race because those other nations could come to Israel and become a part of that nation and join the, the God of Israel. But it had to do with the worship of these false gods. It would turn away their hearts after following after strange gods. This is exactly what King Solomon did near the end of his tenure, and he led Israel into great apostasy by building the high places of Molech and Milcom in Israel. So this is why it's vastly important for Christians to only marry other Bible-believing Christians. This, is, this should be a foundation in your life of, of teaching. Uh, the Bible says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? We have no communion. We, have, we don't have the same things in common in our, in our underlying ideology and beliefs in, our, in, in the way that we, that we view the world. Jeremiah says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations.